It's that time of year once again. The G1 Climax 32 has begun, and this is my review of the first day of tournament action. Now, before I get into these matches, a couple points that I want to bring up. Number one, they usually have a 20-man, two-block tournament where he has 10 people in block A, 10 in block B. This year, they have a grand total of 28 competitors in four blocks. So you got A, B, C, and D blocks. The second thing I wanna bring up, it appears that this year they're not going to dedicate separate nights for each of the blocks. It appears as though they're going to have one match from each block and of course, they always do undercard matches, which is mixed tags, giving you previews of upcoming matches. But as you know, if you've listened to me before, I'm not going to cover the undercard matches because, let's be honest, you're here for the review of the actual tournament matches. So without further ado, let's get into those. The tournament begins with Aaron Hanare defeating Hiroshi Tanahashi of the C Block. This is a big win for Aaron Hanare, and I'm glad they went this direction. Tanahashi is competing in his 21st G1, so like I said, big win for Aaron Hanare. I'm very happy. Looking at him, he has put on some size for this tournament. Unlike a lot of the other United Empire members, he was outright cheating. The United Empire is mostly just really cocky, not cheating heels. Hanare in this match, he used a lot of heel tactics pulling hair, they really emphasize the ultimate weapon gimmick that he's got going on, using some very aggressive strikes. Tanahashi, in my opinion, wrestles better against opponents like this, but like I said, Aaron Hanari walks away with a victory. Tanahashi attempts a high fly flow. Hanari puts his knees up, and it's the beginning of the end for Tanahashi as Hanari drops him with the Streets of Rage and picks up his first two points of the tournament. The next match from the D block, we have Will Ospreay defeating El Phantasmo. El Phantasmo walks to the ring and you know his ring jacket, got the LED board across his shoulders and the message of the night was extremely long phallus. So <laughs> take that for what it is. I'm not surprised with the outcome of this match. Will Ospreay has been the Rev Pro champ since February 14th, 2020. He's the current IWGP US heavyweight champion. This is El Phantasmo's first match in a G1, first match as a heavyweight. So I don't believe he was gonna win going into this match. Will Ospreay jump starts with a shotgun drop kick with a dive to the outside and a springboard forearm. So he starts this match off pretty quickly. Overall, as I'm watching this match, it kind of looks like a big brother beating on his younger brother. Little bro gets his licks in, but big bro manhandles him overall. I have to say, ELP, he has balls. Inviting a strike exchange against Will Ospreay. But he's just not ready to compete in the heavyweight tournament. ELP tries putting away Will Ospreay with a CR2. But Osprey escapes, delivers a backslide, but when El Phantasmo looks at the ref after Will Osprey kicks out, Will Osprey caught him with the hidden blade to the face, picking up the pin for his first two points. Excellent match between Will Osprey and El Phantasmo. Side note, Will Osprey just might be one of the best wrestlers today. Just saying. Next match we have from the B block, Jay White defeating Sonata, the current IWGP World Heavyweight Champion, Jay White. Sonata looks a bit shaggy by the head. Brother needs to get himself a haircut. It's a nice open. Jay rolls to the outside. He taunts the crowd, trying to get him to chant Sonata. Japan is still have the ban on anyone actually cheering, so all they can do is clap. So, like a heel, Jay is trying to get the crowd to chant Sonata. Sonata. <laughs> he tells Sonata to open the ropes because he's not going to get back in the ring. When Sonata finally does, first he tries to <laughs> pick up the bottom and middle ropes like Jay White's a chick. Jay White is not having none of that, so Sonata opens up the top and the middle rope. Jay White tries to sneak attack him, but Sonata was ready, caught his foot, and then they went into a headlock spot with a drop kick to the outside, sending Jay flying. 
But as always, Jay White has more tricks up his sleeves and catches Sonata on the outside using the barricades to gain the advantage. Jay White keeps taunting Sonata, chanting his name while putting him in various holes. Man, Jay is such a great heel. I really enjoy watching him work. But Sonata is no chump. He puts on an excellent performance as well, using the Paradise Lock to catch his breath. Honestly, I've said this before, if that lock works as well as it's supposed to, Sonata, there's no reason why he shouldn't take his opponent to the outside, put him in the Paradise Lock, and then get a count-out victory. But that's just me. Gato provided some distractions throughout the match. For instance, when Jay White was put in the skull and he jumps up on the apron. Here's an interesting spot. Jay White gives a European uppercut to Sonata, and when he fell, his foot caught Jay White right in the balls. <laughs> Jay White is pleading with the ref to disqualify Sonata, shoves Red Shoes, who shoved him back into Sonata, who tries to roll him up, but only gets a two count. This is a great back and forth sequence. Sonata trying to hook the skull in, Jay trying to escape, gives him an eye gouge and a blade runner, which finishes the match. Jay White walks away with two points. And in the main event of the evening, from the A block, we have Kazuchika Okada defeating Jeff Cobb. Now, I'm surprised they gave us this match so early in the tournament, seeing as how this was the deciding match for the block last year between Okada and Jeff Cobb. I'm a little disappointed that Jeff Cobb didn't get the victory. I definitely, it definitely would have shook things up and Cobb would have gone on a hot start in this year's G1. We all know Okada's making the semifinal, so there was no reason why Okada should have beat Jeff Cobb. But when you only have a block of seven, you only have six matches, every win counts. So I guess not how I would have booked it, but whatever. I'm not Gato. A uh, good back and forth action between these two. Okada always paces his match as well. During the match, a board became loose and Red Shoes was stomping on it to get it back into place. Jeff Cobb and Okada, just great professionals. They rolled to the outside to avoid any injury with a loose board. And uh, let me tell you folks, if you've never been in a wrestling ring and has some shifty boards underneath you, yeah, you can risk injury. So it was smarter than to do that until Red Shoes took care of that. Getting back into the match, Jeff Cobb performs a tombstone on Okada, then stands back up like he was going to give him another one, but Okada reverses it and gives him a spinning tombstone, which looked kind of nasty. I'm always nervous looking at them spinning tombstones because it looked like he can just drop them on his head at any point, but Okada's great, so he's very safe. In the end, Okada finished off Cobb with a landslide and a Rainmaker combination. To me, the ending kind of fell flat, but it was a good match overall and easily went about 25 minutes. I just think that the, the finish was a little anticlimactic, but that's just my opinion again. But that's going to do it for today's review of day one of tournament action. Be sure to return to my channel when I review day two. We have a lot more tournament to go. So again, I will see you guys next time.